Hello, 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 singles, marriageable singles, wherever you are this evening. I want to welcome you to this show. And I know it is a, a show of its kind because tonight uh, we have a very hot, hot topic. And this is the main topic. Uh, if you are single, you cannot miss it. Please invite a friend. Any single, marriageable single, and also even if you are married, you can help another person. So this show is not just for singles alone, but for those even who are married and they know they have some people looking upon them for just counseling and, and, and guidance. So this show is set for you. So tonight we are talking about selection. Uh, the purpose of this show, um, one thing that triggered me uh, to, to, to have such a show is because of the way I saw most single people, uh, they were be, they, they, there is a lot of information on the internet and they are confused which one to follow. So we came up, or I came up, or God put this burden on my heart so that I can help uh, the singles out there to have solid foundation when it comes to their uh, choosing their marriage uh, spouses. And this is what this show is all about, is to help our young people so that they don't end up in wrong marriages, in wrong relationships that will make them to be unhappy. If there is something that God wants us to be, is to be happy. And happiness begins at home. Happiness begins by you uh, um, being with the right people. So today we are doing our uh, last uh, last episode. We talked about identifying uh, the marriage partner, and my panelists were very academic, categorical, saying that for you to identify uh, the basis of your identification should base or should be your purpose. You have to identify your purpose for you to know, uh, to identify the partner. So if you don't know your purpose, then you are not a candidate of identifying even a marriage partner because that is where it begins. If you you you, you take, uh, if you, you identify a wrong partner, and remember God say he will make a partner or a helpmate who is suitable. So it means not all partners are suitable to you and they are suitable to you according to your purpose please if you didn't watch this uh that episode just go back uh scroll through the uh um after this show, scroll through the channel and you'll find identification of a partner, a very powerful, powerful session. You cannot afford to miss it if you are a single person looking to have a healthy marriage and a healthy relationship. My name is Ruth Sifa and uh, I'm so excited to have my panelists here. They are so much said. They are, these are vessels of God. Uh, they are vessels of God sent by God himself. Let me just add them up. Uh, <laughs> uh, they are so much said uh, to, uh, to, to just help us and give us the wisdom that we need in this relationship. They are so much sold out. And these are the people, if you want to know somebody has been appointed by God and has, has this burden of just uh, uh, sharing uh, the, the wisdom that God has put them, they have books. Uh, they have books uh, written, uh, 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 they have wrote books just on marriage. Uh, Pastor, uh, Reverend Elizabeth has a book called Enjoying uh, Marito Breakthrough, and uh, Pastor Byron has a book called Marriage. Is it Marriage by uh, Marriage Nuggets? Please, you can find their books. Uh, uh, you can find their books and just read. Uh, we have done a, a, a personal interview with them so that you can know them better and you can experience. And please, you are free to conduct them just to ask if you have any personal question that you might not ask on this show, make sure you reach out to them or you reach out to me and I will be able to help you find a solution to that question that has been um, 
that has been uh, on your mind for a while and you don't have a concrete answer. So our show starts now. Hi, Reverend. <laughs> Welcome to the Hi. show. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Pastor Byron, I'm happy to see you. <laughs> and I'm so excited you. that you are on. Uh, yeah, welcome to the show. <laughs> yeah, so Pastor Byron, yes, I can hear you, sir, I'm loud and clear. Thank you. So please, maybe you just start with the word of prayer. Yeah, I can hear you, sir. I can. Just pray okay, for us. Yes, okay, I'm seeing you and, the, and the, Amen. We glorify your name tonight. Thank you that you have brought us in this fellowship. Lord, speak to us in the counsel of your word. Minister to our hearts, to these youths and singles tonight. Sanctify them by the truth of your word. And Lord, may their be a restoration in their relationship as they get prepared to get into the institution of marriage. We give you praise in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Thank you so much, sir. And uh, it is another Tuesday that we we are, uh, the people are very much set. And uh, I have received some questions that I will want us to just uh, talk about it and um and begin off. So, mommy, uh, I will start with you. <laughs> you, 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 uh, you, 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 you have, uh, you have uh, um, this knowledge, and uh, you are a person, a, a, a no nonsense person. <laughs> Please make sure you say it the way it is today, because our our singles are confused. Uh, most of the singles that have talked to me today, they were like, "Mommy, that is the right topic," because uh, we are having issues when it comes to selection, uh, and the, and even men. Uh, so we are very much, uh, they are very much said. So we will go directly to the uh, to the topic of today. And uh, we are starting by, um, our, uh, first of all, uh, finding where can we find a good partner? <laughs> Thank you, Pastor Ruth for bringing me to this show tonight and thank Amen. you pastor byron nice to meet you here again pastor byron <laughs> yes amen mm -hmm. um, i want to read from proverbs nineteen fourteen. i hope you have your bibles with you mm -hmm. proverbs nineteen fourteen. Mm -hmm. Let me read what the Bible says. Huh? Proverbs 19, 14. Mm. Mm -hmm. We have to back, I'm backing my answers with the word of God. Because I know I'm talking to Christians. Mm -hmm. If I'm not, yeah? House house and wealth are inherited from parents but a prudent mm -hmm. wife is from the lord house mm -hmm. and houses houses and wealth are inherited from parents but a good a prudent wife is from the lord a mm -hmm. prudent a good husband is from the lord a good mm -hmm. wife is from the lord a good mm -hmm. uh, partner is from the lord mm -hmm. So what the Bible says here is, your father can live for you houses, but only God can give you the right path. Mm -hmm. And how do you position yourself to get the right partner? I will give my own testimony. Mm -hmm. I was working as uh, in the hospital as a lab technician when the Lord asked me to go to the Bible school. Believe mm -hmm. me, brethren, I never knew that I was going to get 
a husband in the Bible school. I obeyed God. So once, mm -hmm. what I would say is, where I read that says, houses and wealth mm -hmm. hmm, can be inherited from God, but the right, the right, the good partner can come from God. Parents can give you houses. Parents can give you wealth, but only God can give you the right partner. And this right partner, only you can get that right partner if you position yourself in the at the right place. Position yourself. Like me, when God asked me to go to the Bible school, I had to resign. I was working in the hospital. I was collecting salary. I never mm -hmm. knew the life of living by faith. So when I said <laughs> yes, when I said yes, Lord, one year down the Bible school, because the Bible school was years. One year after I got to the Bible school, actually one and a half years, then God unveiled me to my husband. Mm -hmm. Granted that I disobeyed God, who knows whether today I will be married or I may have gotten into a wrong marriage. So what I would say, good spouse comes from the Lord. Mother Amen. and father give you uh, wet, built for you houses, but only God can give the right partner. Have I answered the question? Oh, where yes, can I, have answered. I can find uh -huh. a good partner in God. I can find uh -huh. a good partner. You can find a good partner in God. Because I think I'm talking to born again Christians. Mm -hmm. I don't expect you to go to get a, a, a partner in, a, okay, let me not mention any sect. But what I know, you find the right partner in God. If you are in the right Amen. Place, in the right Amen. Thank you. <laughs> okay, now when you say you'll find the right partner in God and... Um, what do you mean? Uh, because uh, <laughs> where exactly can somebody go and look for a marriage partner? Do we go look for one or we wait for God to bring one to us? <laughs> Let me tell you. You know, when, uh, when Adam and Eve, when Adam was given a wife by God, and uh, Eve brought a, uh, uh, made Adam to eat the forbidden food. Adam told God that the wife that you gave to me is the one that has made me to eat this forbidden fruit. So now God has allowed man to look for a wife himself. So what I will say, a man who is prayerful, the Lord will direct him and give him, I mean, give him direction. But it's not God that will say, go, do this. Because God does not want to be held responsible. There's a way that seemed right unto a man, but the end is destruction. So when a man is prayerful, God will align that man's destiny to even his marital destiny, business destiny, uh, destiny in all ramification. So it takes sensitivity to know who is able to go alongside with you, like what you said, what the, the topic you discussed last week. It was a very powerful topic that has really opened the eyes of young people. Because you have to realign your marital destiny with your purpose. So if your purpose in life you are a preacher and you go to marry somebody who does not even go to church. Tell me, are you able to fulfill your purpose as a preacher? You see, you can't now. So what happens? It depends on what you want out of life and where you go. Me, I went to Bible school. It was there God gave me a husband. Maybe if I didn't go to Bible school, I wouldn't get that husband 
I'm not saying that everybody should go to Bible school. Already I knew I had a calling. And it is in line with my calling that God gave me husband. So your partner will come in line with your calling. Hallelujah. And, and okay, uh, you find that uh, some people, uh, just the way you have said, um, you 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 are doing you are you are working and God talked to you and told you that uh, go to this place. You find uh, there are some people who are not obeying even the instructions of God, because uh, just the way you have said, are uh, living a life of faith. There are so many young and uh, singles who are faithless. They don't have. And it, and it, and it, uh, when 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 it comes to uh, if you tell them to do this, even if it is in the line of their purpose, they still won't do that. And uh, uh, and and you find that it is so difficult, even when a man uh, uh, when 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 a, a man or a woman approaches them, especially ladies, maybe. Uh, not most of us, even me, I never knew I'll get married to a pastor, but I just found myself in that category. Now you find a man approaching you, but since you as a woman, you have not identified your call uh, or your calling or your purpose, you are still in the shadow. You are not, it's not so clear to you. What are you supposed to do? If a man approaches you and you feel this man, uh, maybe his vision or his purpose it doesn't, according to that time, it doesn't rhyme with you. That is where that secret place is needed. You have to go to the secret place. I know I am talking to born again Christians who know what the secret place is. You will hear a still small voice. Walk ye this way. So everybody, every potential spouse, every potential suitor should be able to go to the secret place. He who knows the future, he who holds your future will be able to reveal to you there is that still small voice. As a Christian, you don't even look at the present state of a man or the present state of a woman. You have to see them, into, see their future with the eyes of the spirit. Because when you say you are of a marriageable age, I'm not seeing a, a confused or somebody who does not know the left from the right. Because somebody who is ready for marriage I assume you should be mentally mature. You see, even spiritually and otherwise. Like I said the other time, when purpose is not known, abuse will be inevitable. Abuse is inevitable. Because some people, they hear marriage in quotes. They think it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, 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 it's a joking matter. It's not. This has to, you have to be spiritually involved, emotionally involved, financially involved, involved in every area. So it's better before you say, I do. Sit down and hear from God. Don't because you have waited, my son, Pastor Pius, will say, accept the Lord. There are some sisters who have become, they have gotten to an age where Maybe they are 45, 40, and they think time is running. Therefore, any man that just comes that has trousers and says, I want to marry you, they succumb. And they don't know. They don't know where the man is headed to. They just agree. And many people are in such marriage. Please, before you say I do, get to know your purpose and the purpose of that man's life. There are some people. At 35, 40, they are still living with their father and mother. You go and marry such a man. You'll be struggling with that man's mother in the kitchen, struggling with her in the sitting room. You have to find that. Marry a man. Don't marry a boy. God bless you. Pastor Ruth? Uh, uh, yeah. 
Uh, Pastor, uh, the, uh, Reverend, there is a, a point here um, that I want you 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 uh, categorically uh, inform uh, the <laughs> the young people and the singles. Are they how are they supposed to uh, to 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 find the marriage partner? Are they supposed to actively look for one, or they wait for God to bring one to them? I know you have answered okay. that, but I want, if it is actively uh, looking for, what are they supposed to do when they are looking? <laughs> okay. Is it a man or the woman? Man or woman? Both. Both. Woman advise both. 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 I, I advise both of them. Yeah. You know, the Bible says, in Proverbs 18, 22, a man, do you have your Bible? A man who finds a wife, findeth a good thing and obtains favor. So the man is the one who looks for, the moment he knows he's mentally mature, he knows he can pay, pay rent, house rent, he knows he can feed a woman. He, when he knows he's mentally matured and ready, the Bible says it's the man who finds. So the woman will just position herself. And I always tell women, be serving, actively serving, because God is not going to give a lazy woman to his servant. A man who is active in church, in morning glory, he's there, lunch hour, he's there, he's paying his tithe, he goes for evangelism, he, he, he supports the work of God. God will not give that handsome brother who is actively serving in church, doing the work of God, God is not going to be unjust to give him one lazy sister whose has is to be eyeing a new brother, any new brother that comes to church. She has changed church severally, looking for a brother. My sister, you don't need to look for a man. You just position on your, yourself in the area of service, be in the protocol, be in the, be in the usher, be, be in the evangelism team, be in choir as you are there you will somebody will locate you but now you come late to church nobody even knows you you are too sophisticated you don't even greet anybody after service you come in late you are the first to go because you feel you are looking down on those brothers you are looking at them as small small boys you don't know that in those small small boys there could be a man among them to marry you. So most of us are not positioning ourselves. Therefore, it's hard for the man to locate you. You are not in any of the service group and you are telling God to give you a husband, give you a husband, give you a husband. Please locate yourself in a place to serve, not with the intention of being fun, but with the intention that you love the Lord. With the intention that you love the Lord because as you love the Lord, God also will make sure he gives you the desire of your heart. I don't know whether I have answered, Pastor Ruth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you, have, you have answered. In fact, uh, the, 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 the key word that I have gotten from your explanation is when you are looking for, uh, 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 when you're looking for a spouse, uh, be actively serving but all uh, what you have brought it out is that let your mind not be to impress. You know the the way some ladies uh, serve to impress I, a particular brother. I, I, <laughs> no, I, eh? Or a man comes to church just to get uh, a, a woman. You know they they come purposely. Uh, they come get committed purposely to be seen by a particular sister yeah so that when he I approaches said, that sister he will not say no <laughs> now mom uh how do you how how do you know that this guy is the right person for you uh when you are selecting uh the the marriage partner how do you know that now you have actively served and uh Obviously, they they have come so many. Uh, it won't. Uh, it will not be a one pa a one person. Or uh, and uh, and uh, as a woman, you might have many 
many people, uh, many men are following you up, showing their interest in you. And that is where the ladies get confused. Because yes, they are serving, they are so uh, so dedicated, and the, the, the time maybe has come, and many brothers line up for <laughs> for asking them maybe for, for, for a, a hand in, the, in, in marriage or, or in a relationship. What is that lady supposed to do? I'm talking about the still small voice. Your spiritual mm. antenna has to be very high. You bear the same, you, uh, my spirit bears witness. God's spirit bears witness with my spirit. We are talking about spiritual antenna. The spiritual antenna has to be very high. Please, when you are praying, don't just pray like that. Pray with understanding. Pray and allow God to speak. The mistake some people make is that they are praying, but they are not allowing God to speak to them. They do all the talking. As you are praying, also allow this still small voice to speak to you. Ones are women. Women are very sensitive. Women who are spiritual, who are prayerful. Something will click. There will be a witness in your spirit that this is the man. Physically, you may not look like the person you really want, but your spirit will bear witness. There will be a click. There will be, there will be a, a chemistry. There will be chemistry to show. There will be some feeling that, oh, this is the right man. Even though there are seven suitors, you will discover that the one that is for you, your spirit will bear witness with his spirit. And with the spirit of God, that this is the one. Oh, oh yeah, uh, uh, that is. That. <laughs> oh yeah, that is that is true. That is very true. So uh, let's get to uh, a question here. Uh, there is this question that uh, I received about um, uh, soulmates. Do we have soulmates? Do we have somebody who is so specific? Uh, maybe also you just talk about who are soulmates. <laughs> because uh, so I, I had somebody I had somebody saying, uh, in this life you always meet your soulmate after you are married. <laughs> and I even don't know who is a soulmate. <laughs> so when it comes to Christianity, do we have these people called soulmates? And uh, is there just a specific person that God created for you to marry? And if you don't uh, marry that person, you will never be happy. Anyway, happiness is relative. It depends on what you mean by happiness. Come, Pastor Byron, help me here. Pastor Byron, is this the <laughs> let me let me let me let me bring him on just a minute just a minute i bring him on oh, meanwhile be talking <laughs> yeah. Yeah, pastor byron let me bring pastor byron on <laughs> pastor byron eh, this issue of soulmate have you ever heard of soulmate <laughs> yes yes i've uh, heard about it but uh, it's important. Last time, I, I blessed the Lord for Reverend, uh, Reverend Elizabeth, and I love the point she's hitting home about a still small voice. That's where the magic is, the still small voice. Now, talking about soulmates. Soulmates, it's important to understand that we are talking as Christians, and not just as Christians, but we are talking as believers. As believers, we are led in the ways of the Lord. Romans 12, 2, the Bible says that do not be conformed to the ways of the world. The world talks about soulmates. The world talks about just connection. The world talks about searching. The world talks about dating. The world, these are things that we borrowed and brought them to church. But as believers, last week we talked about Romans 8, 14. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. So at before when the gents the gents alone and the ladies on one side, 
They are both sons of God. Now, as they serve, as they busy themselves in service, and their their lives mirror the character and image of Christ, they will be found in the right places. Number one, if you are a believer, you will be almost you will be found in church. Number two, as you continue to serve, it will narrow down. Maybe you go maybe to the ashes department or maybe to the praise and worship, or maybe to the protocol. So you'll find it is narrowing down, it's narrowing down. So it is not about segments, it's purpose that brings you together. The gifting upon the baby and the gifting upon the gen, the Holy Spirit brings you together into a union of purpose, where now even as you serve in the marriage institution, you will work as one team. But we, there is no particular person that maybe, Pastor Byron, you are only meant to meet this person, no. Because then God would look like he's, we, are, we are robots and he's seated somewhere with a remote control. He gave us a free will. He gave us a free will. So what happens is, as I grow in purpose, as I lose myself in service, as I lose myself in serving in the ministry, the eyes of my understanding will be opened. And also the lady who's also in the same plane, She's also in service. She's also serving. She's also obedient. She, now we will be combined, we'll be united in the level of gifting, purpose, service, and responsibility. So that is the plan. So when we meet, we meet at the level of service, at the level of purpose, and at the level of responsibility. God does not unite people at the level where it is my effort that counts, or the effort of the lady. Because now if we say we are soulmates, then there is something up within our reach, that which we can control. But it is all about the leading of the Spirit of God. Amen, amen, Pastor. Yeah, yeah, that one is very, very loud and clear. Now, sir, there is this issue that uh, young people, you hear them say that uh, so-and-so prophesied to them that this that man is their husband or that man is their wife. You know, they are those servants of God who prophesy. <laughs> yeah. And uh, this lady came like uh, the, uh, the my pastor prophesied that uh, I should marry uh, this brother, but me I don't love this brother. And now she feels if she doesn't marry this man, um, then uh, she will never be happy because she will be disobeying. What 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 is your your take on that? <laughs> oh my. And, uh, these things are very common. These things are very common. And uh, I pray in the name of Jesus that after this show, the, our, our singles and our youths will, 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 will find uh, a leading and from the counsel of God. Now, it is very important to understand that God does not speak from without. God does not speak from outside in. God speaks from inside out. So he will speak to me inside. He will speak to me inside, but Pastor Ruth will confirm. Pastor Elizabeth, Reverend Elizabeth will confirm. God does not speak from outside in. It's important to understand this. Our youths and singles that are listening to us tonight, I want you to understand this. Don't let anyone tell you that I prophesy. The Lord, the Lord cannot show an outside party <laughs> which he has not inspired in your heart because you're the person who's going to live with this individual. Hallelujah. Let us, know, <laughs> yes, let us know this tonight. The Lord speaks from inside out. He will plant something in my heart. He will put a seal in my heart in the power of the Holy Spirit. And then as I go out there, my pastor can confirm. A friend can confirm. My HBC leader can confirm. But it has to come from within. It has to come from within. So when someone tells you, when you don't have a deep in inspiration inside, you will know right there that this is not of God. And maybe this person has an agenda. I've had people cases where my one pastor was telling a lady, they had an assistant pastor, but the constitution said that he could not be ordained when he was single. So they were pushing a lady in church to get married to this gentleman. And they were telling this lady, you know, this man is a pastor. Oh, he's a pastor. That is not important. We don't marry officers. 
We don't marry officers. We are brought together by God, by the power of the gifting, so that we can move in purpose. But we do not bring people on the strength of maybe strengthening an office or maybe confirming some program in church. Yeah. Pastor and Reverend Elizabeth, what is your take? <laughs> what is your take on that? Uh, where uh, a servant of God prophesies to you, who is your spouse? Who, will, who is supposed to marry you? <laughs> <laughs> the Bible says a man who finds a wife, not a pastor who Thank you, Pastor Myron. You have answered it all. I don't have any <laughs> <laughs> that that is that is that is so powerful. And then now again on the same same thing, Pastor, uh, uh, my panelist, there is there is there is this where uh, someone a, a man comes and tells a woman, uh, God showed me uh, that you are my wife, but the woman doesn't have the conviction, and this man is like wants to push. He wants to push the lady that it, she is the one to marry, that, that that lady is the one to marry him. And you find now they are colliding. What, what, what is the lady supposed to do? The lady, the, uh, last week the when we shared about... Oh, Sorry. Go on. Uh, but Reverend, go first. <laughs> <laughs> the Bible says, Thank you, Pastor Byron. Welcome, thank you. <laughs> thank you for your input. I appreciate the insight that you have. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Amen, amen. The Bible says, mm -hmm. Perfect love casts away fear. Mm -hmm. Isn't it, Pastor Byron? Oh, yes, mm -hmm. yes, you cannot mm -hmm. go into a that you are afraid you are doing it because of fear yes she has to also have a conviction and have chemistry mm. you know body chemistry you know what i mean mm -hmm. yeah she has to be convinced and she also have to have feeling because marriage mm. you have to feel you have to have some chemistry not just mm -hmm. because somebody said, Thou sayest the Lord. The same God who spoke to that <laughs> man should also speak to me. Then I should also have the pastor Byron said, There mm -hmm. should be, we should, my spirit bears witness with your spirit. Mm -hmm. No woman should enter into a marriage because of fear. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow, powerful. Yes, Pastor Byron, what are you saying? <laughs> yes. I don't know, uh, Reverend, I just spoken about. Yes, thank you, Reverend. I just wanted to add something. You see, when 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 Adam and Eve story, when God says, and God thought to himself, it's not good for this man to be alone. Mm -hmm. Then the Bible says, then he created Adam from the man. So there's a process. Between from man to Adam, there's a process. By that word, he created Adam from the man. Then to Adam. Now to Adam, again, the yes. Lord... Sorry. Him, yes? Hello? Sorry, you are saying uh, Adam from man or Eve from man? From Adam. Uh, I started from blind Kidogo so that we can understand something. The man, mm -hmm. Adam is created from the man. And then Eve is created from the rib of Adam. Mm -hmm. So there's a yes, so there's a process here. And there is it is not wise for anyone to be coerced, to be pushed. To be to to, to 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 be to be to be to be hijacked or to be forced into an arrangement 
outside of a conviction because this is not just yes, this it is just a play thing. Marriage is not just some some toy game where you you, you can move in by by just some push or coercion or an an an, 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 an uh, what what do you call it? Some uh, what what do I what, what do I use? Okay, okay, out of coercion, maybe out of pressure, maybe it's your boss or it's your pastor or something like that. That's what I wanted to say. Thank you. Amen, amen. Thank you for answering that question, and I'm so excited. Now, there is this question that I received today. Uh, where the, uh, the, 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 the man, the man thinks he is in a relationship with the lady, but he has never proposed. He has never told, told her anything, but according to him, I think he just do signs and wonders, but he has not opened his mouth to talk to the lady. <laughs> and now uh, 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 the, lady, the lady is not aware of this relationship. And uh, since the man is a man of God, he is a pastor, he feels the lady, uh, you know, this lady now, he, he, you know, the lady feels he is free to choose anybody that he wants to, uh, to relate with. But this man of God feels this lady is not true because it's like he's double dealing him. And yet he has never spoken to this lady about love. What is this lady supposed to do? I believe she's watching. Let us advise her. <laughs> I told her you will speak to her purposely. Marry her. If she gets a man who is bold enough, women don't like a man that is weak. We like a bold man. Mm. Yes, you have to be <laughs> bold. Mm -hmm. We cannot just assume the man is not getting younger. Why will he waste her time? If she gets somebody who is ready and is bold enough to speak, she should go ahead. And if she mm -hmm. loves him and she feels it's the will of God, and they have the same purpose, running together, following, chasing after the same purpose. But this man that is not speaking, you will discover the man even has somebody else behind. Why is he not speaking? Mm -hmm. Why is he not speaking? What is his reason for not speaking? He should be bold. Women love bold men. We don't like weaklings. <laughs> we don't have big men who are still in pampas. <laughs> I like this. <laughs> Pastor Byron, <laughs> you yeah. are a man. Can you speak now? <laughs> Defend them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> wow. Okay. It's, it's, it's important. It's very important that the man, as you grow, again, we cannot say, we cannot run away from purpose. As we grow in purpose, we are emboldened. The Holy Spirit gives us boldness. And when you are in the will of God, there is a boldness that no one can ever understand or explain. The, the, the Bible says in the book of Acts, when Peter and then John, John was, James was speaking, and the people looked at them and they were wondering, these people are unlearned. They've not gone to school, but they were with Jesus. So anyone full of the Spirit, especially at a level of a man of God, at a level of a pastor, to leave a lady just hovering over the waters and then you think that she is the dealing, the man is to blame. The boldness, he must find a way of relaying this information. He must find a way, even if it is not direct. Actually, these days we have so, they have, the internet has opened. I can text, I can messenger, I can write WhatsApp, just a hi, hello, two, three days. The lady will know. Then from that, you will pull up and then, but there must be out a spoken word because we have had cases where people were married and then the man will say actually i never i never told you that i wanted to marry you 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 pushed it so it is important especially for the man to come out boldly and tell the lady that this is what i want to do so that there is a place where we can look back to we can ask the lady, yes did as this one ever committed yes after commitment what did he do so the man it's important for the man as the person who has been given the grace to head the family to speak out and share the thought, share the heart position with the lady. 
Okay, sir. Thank you for that answer. Now here comes those men who don't speak, but they draw actions to 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 influence women. You know, uh, he's talking so nicely. He's visiting. He's doing what? He's not speaking, but he's doing this with several guys. You know, uh, very much born again. Uh, very much uh, serving God. <laughs> <laughs> very much sold out but he has these girlfriends eh? he is just talking to them so all of the girlfriends are thinking this man is interested in me yeah <laughs> but you come and find that this man maybe even is not interested in any of them and maybe even the ladies you know the way ladies are uh, try to uh, to please a man they can even go cook for him or bring him some food he just eats and keeps quiet <laughs> you know ladies they are hoping maybe he will speak but yeah. he's not speaking he's just taking advantage of them what are the ladies supposed to do now let me start with let me uh, let me start with the mama <laughs> she's a lady you have seen uh, this <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Reverend. Thank you, Pastor Ruth. Uh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Okay, <laughs> Before I mention this point, can you allow me to finish? I have another show after now. Can I mm. finish and then I leave? Is it okay? No. Nope. When I finish and No problem. Okay. Yeah. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, For God has not given us the spirit of, of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. A man with a sound mind to be able to know what he wants. Why will a man of God between these two daughters of Zion. He mm. also will have children in the future. You should know that life is a seed. Mm. He is deceiving so many sisters in different cities. What I will advise mm. is the moment these sisters are aware of who this man is, she should just back out. Because the more people see her with this man, the guys who are serious, who are bold, who are men enough, who are man enough or men enough, will not be able to talk to her because they assume Pastor Fulani, Brother Fulani is dating her. So he's blocking this daughter of Zion from getting into her marital destiny. And God will not take mm -hmm. it lightly with that man. So I will advise the mm -hmm. sisters uh, since they now know, they should just delete his number from their phone. Delete. You are. It's your phone. <laughs> delete. <laughs> Not only if you are serving, you are serving. Even if you are a member of that man's church, he's a Casanova. Mm. That man does not have the spirit of God. <laughs> he doesn't have conscience. You know, you have to be hard on him. Mm -hmm. This girl, because this is a girl who is already ready for marriage, but because she's desperate, mm. so this man mm. he is a con man because he's taking a vest from <laughs> Sister A, he's getting mm. shoes from Sister B, he's getting mm. a rent from Sister F, he's also mm. his mother's shopping is being done by Sister E. That man is a mm. Casanova. Is a con man. <laughs> 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 you are, mm -hmm. that man's number from your phone. Give opportunity to the man who is seriously ready. Because I'm not mm -hmm. getting younger, my dear sister and daughter. At least I am mother mm -hmm. I can speak to your to you. I can speak to mm -hmm. you. You are not getting younger. You can be playing. Mm -hmm somebody taking you around taking you around for how long you are not getting younger you're already okay. having gray hair something is <laughs> reducing out of 
Why will you waste mm. time with such a man? I will say back, can delete his number. Delete. Tell them I say, Pastor Elizabeth say, delete. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Oh, thank, you, Ma. Bye. thank you for coming, ma'am. God bless you. <laughs> you have added viewers. If there is a man who is not speaking, yeah, you are uh he's just showing uh signs and wonders and uh, and and it's not uh telling you uh coming out openly and telling you if he is interested in you or not. Pastor Elizabeth, Reverend Elizabeth has said delete his number. Let me bring on Pastor Byron. Pastor Byron, you have you are you are you are opposite. Um I can't see you. <laughs> I can't see you. I I I can't see you. I don't know where you are going. Please just set your uh, your camera well. Uh tonight we are talking about uh selection of a marriage partner, and this is a very important decision that you have to make as a young person and as a single. It is a very, uh, we always say after, if you are Christian, after uh, making the important decision of receiving Christ in your life, the next important decision that you need to take or to make is to, to know who you will marry because they will decide uh, your destiny. They are these decisions determine your destiny. And it is a very, very important decision that you need to make when you are you have a solid mind, when you are everything, uh, you are very sober. Because don't make this decision in a haste. Don't make this decision, as we are, my, my panelists have said, when you are uh, uh, when you are coerced. Don't make it when you don't feel ready. Just wait until you are ready, until you have that small, still voice, until your heart has a witness. It doesn't matter how lovely the man can be and maybe he can lure you with money uh, or the woman can be very beautiful and you feel you cannot miss this one please please this is a very important decision that we will need to make pastor byron yes i can see you now uh, <laughs> uh what, what is your take before we just uh, uh, uh to go to the next question about what Pastor uh, Reverend Reverend Elizabeth was talking about, uh, this man who is just uh, uh, playing around with the mind of ladies, yeah, uh, they is not speaking. But when they bring, uh, he's just talking them. I don't know. Uh, maybe the you know sometimes the ladies can be so desperate and um, they can even get close to a man just for emotional whatever, yeah. and a man who receives them they can get they are attached to him and uh, they can now try to maybe win him over but now this man he knows that these ladies are trying to win him over but he just plays along <laughs> along the uh, along that and at the end of it all he hurts them he hurts them because maybe a uh, lady a will think He's so much in love with, with, with her. Uh, Lady B is also thinking the same. Lady C is also thinking the same. Uh, what is your advice to such a man and also to such ladies? But the only keyword to this, the only keyword, because, because men are emotional beings. We must understand. Men are emotional beings. And the only sense of balance is caused by someone who is focused. You cannot be focused if you're not growing in righteousness. We must learn, our youth and our singles must know that they are spirit beings, they are led of the spirit, because that is the only way, that is the only way which emotion will be killed. Emotion will be put to the almost zero level. They will not see by, by the senses. They will not be, be, be pulled by a, a, a man who is showing or maybe he has a good job or whatever. And he, so he has several ladies and the ladies does not. 
<laughs> wow, wow, wow. Oh my goodness. Uh, Pastor Byron has gone off, but uh, he was bringing in a very important part uh, of this question uh, that, um, first of all, don't look at uh, uh, the physical, uh, the physical uh, part of it. Look at the spiritual part of it. If this man is not speaking, but he's trying to lure you or uh, trying to uh, to put some some uh, minds in you uh, that that are not uh, that are not right. Uh, then make sure you you fix it. Yes, Pastor Byron, continue, please. Are you able to see me now? Yes, 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 please. Yes, I would think that we we the all the the youth and the singles must keep growing in faith. They must keep study. And as they study, they will grow in purpose and they must get busy. He said, maybe when you are in touch, we said last week that you find that this person is very balanced. You're not just serving in church, but very rude to the parents. The neighbors know you as a different personality at your place of work. As you grow in purpose, you become balanced. At home, you're balanced. You're balanced at your place of business. Your balance at your place of work. Then what does that do? That one gives you a sense of balance and you can see things right. You see, when you're not balanced, when you put, you just want to serve in church. And you're not balanced. At home, you're different. At a place of work, you're different. You, it is very easy for a man to play with you because now you'll fix your eyes on him. But when you fix your eyes on purpose, it will be balanced because you'll cut the eye of someone at home. You'll cut the eye of someone in the, in the estate. Cut someone at place of work, so that one will, it will force you to make sure that it is of the leading of God. What is happening to our youth is that they are not growing in faith. Most of them get to an age, and then they start thinking that now I need to marry or I need to be married. So anyone that comes by, anyone that asks, anyone that that that, that shows some suggestions, anyone who, who throws a word, sends a text they start fixing themselves on these people. But they must know as they grow in purpose, they will be so clear in their hearts. A man who is joking, a lady will know. And also a man will also know that it is not, I don't have to date this lady and talk to this other and talk. Why? Not out of thought, not out of emotion, but because he is so soaked in purpose. He's so driven by his gifting. He's so focused. Not by mind, I remember your cousin. He's so focused because of the purpose thing. So I am a fast. He joke around and did that with ladies here and also ladies also not sure of the man to give in to. This, it is all about staying focused so that you can be led by the spirit or else your emotions will always give you away. Wow, you. wow. This is so powerful and it is so awesome. I like it. Uh, let me ask you this question. Should a Christian seek dating and matching, making services to find a spouse? A big and no? also, <laughs> and no. also we, we, are, we are found, uh, wait a minute, sir. And also we are yes. found even in church. There are people yes. who are much much making you know <laughs> they are much making sister so and so with the brother so and so uh because uh, uh these people the uh, the youths uh when you ask them uh, uh you mean out of all these sisters, these sisters you have not seen anybody uh they will say uh, them they're confused they they don't know so you help them to see <laughs> Well, yeah. and, uh, explain, explain to that. <laughs> you see, uh, Reverend Elizabeth spoke something very powerful, and she said it around twice or thrice. This same small voice. You, you cannot, and I want the youth and the singles to hear this clearly. Anything around about the senses, the height the status, the job, the, the complexion, the salaries, all those should be a confirmation of an inner voice. They must not use anything of the senses as a determining factor. So that 
in itself rules out dating and matching because dating and matching you have to match i, I come and tell you now i want a, a tribe i want such a level of education i want from this country i want from so they are all data it's a, a data thing but data should confirm i, I want the dudes and singles to hear this data should confirm an inner voice when you've had the inner voice but you're now still thinking that the lord is, is it the the, the the usher or is it the young the young the gentleman in his praise and worship now the senses will qualify you might even you might just see the way the guy manages himself maybe in his designs the way he does things the outside now confirms but it should not be a determining factor we cannot do dating and we cannot do matching because those ones actually pull you out of your sense of purpose purpose is spiritual purpose is spiritual and we are first spiritual beings and then we are men so if dating and matching will start from the extreme side of the divide which is faulty in the first place it is faulty it is very faulty to date and to match. and even in church we make these mistakes because sometimes i have a friend of mine i know he's, he's, he's a handsome man he's into ministry and he's has served me well so i start thinking that he should marry so i start shopping for a man but it's very wrong if i have to help this man i might maybe help him in prayer we might hold our hands and pray we might share if i have to help anyone i will help him to confirm through the eye of the spirit but i will not help i will never help anyone to confirm physically to tell someone that maybe you should try this or this and this no help people by pushing them for a confirmation from an inner voice thank you Wow, that's so powerful. Thank you, sir. I, I, uh, uh, singles, you have heard it for yourself. Please, please let nobody tell you who to marry. Yeah, if, even if it is your pastor, <laughs> and if it is your pastor, let him not introduce a man or a woman to you and tell you, can you marry this one? No, make sure that as much as they do that, you are finding a, a, uh, you are finding a, 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 a confirmation from God himself that this is the right path, path, partner for you and the right path, uh, person for you. Uh, then uh, we have this question. Uh, um, uh, the question says, uh, what are the barriers uh, or challenges uh, of finding a right partner? The, 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 the barriers and challenges are number one, we can, I can say the general challenges and barriers are normally the physical attributes and especially being led in the five senses. Those are the barriers and the challenges. Because now, for example, I'm 35, I'm 35. Now I, I will come up and say, now I want a lady who's maybe 10 years younger, that is 25. Now you might find a lady who is 25 but that is the only point. But there are so many qualities. But again, all these qualities must confirm an inner voice. So what I always say, the barriers and the challenges are all generalized. Anything that involves the senses is a barrier. Anything that involves the senses is a barrier. But they are very important instruments for confirming that inner voice mm -hmm. yeah what do you mean uh anything that is in the senses uh, which okay. which senses are you talking about <laughs> the, the five senses what what mm -hmm. you can what you can see the attributes maybe like uh, like uh, like maybe the tribe educational standards the nationality the job qualification whether man is married is, is working or not whether the beauty or all, all, all those says the attributes that are readily seen those are the the the, the, the and 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 uh, uh, i have had uh, many uh, many women say they cannot marry a broke man mm. okay. what is your take on that <laughs> <laughs> again again i go back 
to the purpose. When you are led of the purpose, you see the purpose sees in the eyes of God. I can have a very good job. I can have a very good job, but I can lose it anytime. I can have a, 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 a major business, but we have had economic slumpdowns, like maybe when we do, uh, during around about the time of Corona, businesses are slumping. So again, to tell, to talk to my sisters, please don't use Brooklyn. Don't use luck. Don't use financial instability. I have a different point. I, when I, I met my wife, I was just doing it. Was, I can call it a part-time job because I was just, I was just picked and would be sent to work for the ministry for to register delegates for a conference that would that runs in December. So that would that would maybe take maybe once in maybe three months, once in four months. So when I met her, I was financially unstable. I was very, very unstable. But the way we connected, we just connected beyond so much of that. So I want to tell my ladies, don't use that as a factor. The man can have a job today, but can lose it when you're on a honeymoon. You can lose the job after a week after a wedding, a month after a wedding. Job or, job or brokenness cannot be a determining factor. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, you have heard that. Please don't look at the pocket. Let the pocket not be a determining, a determining factor because uh, the money can go anytime. You know, somebody say money has wings, so it can fly away anytime. Will you, will that marriage still stand if 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 that happens? Uh, and then, sir, uh, what about mental st uh, stability? Uh, when it comes to uh, choosing the right partner, uh, what 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 is the place of mental stability, uh, especially when it comes to uh, both uh, the man and the woman? Well, mental now, mental stability now. These are these are uh, when you start seeing each other. <clears throat> these are all processes, and these processes are what but the engagement and but a wedding. Now, mental stability at this, at engagement, there should be some average time that these people can now know each other, they can share. That is the time to gauge such like stuff as mental stability. Because as you go out with someone, you go, you can take tea, you can escort each other. You can share, you will really gauge mental stability because it is important. Marriage is an institution of oneness. Of, you, know, you cannot risk your life to live with someone who is mentally unstable. Because my, I call this institution, you know, sometimes you are called to be responsible and answer to something that you are not responsible for. You are called to answer to something why? Because you are one, but their partner is obviously on the wrong. So you cannot afford to get into this institution with a mentally unstable individual. You need to know it in during this time between engagement and marriage. And it's okay. It's perfectly in order to break an engagement than to move in when you saw clearly, but you assumed that this man or this lady will stabilize. That is another mistake that our youth and singles do. You see something, especially on mental stability, and you start thinking that, oh, you know, now we were planning for the wedding, and this man has been under pressure, I have been under pressure, maybe it's parents, maybe it's the ministry, and I know this man will stabilize. I know this lady will stabilize. It's very wrong, and it's an assumption that has messed men in the marriage institution. Just a minute, sir. Uh, maybe you you explain what is mental stability first, because uh, and what what does it entail? <laughs> okay. Mental mm. stability is an ability to be composed. Is an ability to be stable when when accosted by a situation. 
when acquitted by a situation that now needs decision making, when accosted by a situation that needs sobriety, when accosted by a situation that it's, we call them do or die, where your word will either stabilize this union or your word will bring a beginning of an unstable union that which people will start losing trust, will start losing sense of faithfulness. So mental stability here is a state of being in a position where you are balanced enough. Are you able to be at a place where whether your partner is wrong or not, are you able to stabilize this situation? Are you able to bring your partner to a level playing field where you go into a, a, a situation where you want a solution? you go into a situation where the other party does not feel pushed, where the other party does not feel that you are already blaming them, where the other party also feels that surely I have a partner that I can trust. Where, they are, where and Wherever there is a situation, the partner will be open enough to open to you and tell you, Danny, I made this mistake. You see, mental stability simply means that you put yourself at a situation where your partner, whatever mistake that can happen, he will he or she will be as open enough to open the heart to the deepest bosom of the heart and tell you, honey, this will happen, and I admit my mistake. Forgive me. Let us move on. So mental stability is about it's all about that. Yeah. Wow, so powerful. Yes, you have heard it. Mental stability is where you are able to handle the truth. Let me let me say that to handle the mistakes, handle the truth that the mistakes that your partner did maybe previously or the and they are and your partner is able to open their heart and tell you that. And they know you will be able to uh, to handle it, not maybe break the relationship. <laughs> you know, the, you know, so the thing that makes people to hide these secrets behind is because maybe they fear if they tell their partner uh, uh, about what they did. And I have even seen uh, there are some ladies who hide their children. Eh? Maybe they got children when they were uh, uh, outside. Now they're in a relationship. Now they hide that child or always say they kill that child and the man will come to know maybe after he has married uh, the lady you know so um i think i think i think that part of mental stability is very very vital uh singles out there make sure the person you are getting beat the lady or beat the man that you are uh, you, you they are mentally stable they are able to control their emotions and to control situations just the way pastor has said if you come through a situation maybe one of you did a mistake uh, and because mistakes are there there are sometimes we just uh, it just happens and you find that you are able to share it freely with your partner uh, and because you know that he or she is able to handle it uh, am I right, Pastor, or uh, I'm going out of what you meant? Thank you. Thank you. Right. <laughs> okay. Okay, Pastor. Uh, when, when when are we supposed to do the selection? Uh, at 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 what time? Uh, uh, um, and maybe how? How are uh, we supposed? To, when and how? Uh, when and how? Mm hmm. Okay, let, let me take an example of an Asha. So number one, she's in church or he's in church. So they're mm -hmm. all the believers. If it's a lady, they're all the men are born again. Now he has a choice. It's a free choice. It's a free choice. Now we'll check, he'll check, he'll check. That then we will, he will get to another point. Maybe he's an Asha now. It, 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 the, the eyes will narrow down to maybe the ashes, or not even ashes ministry, because it can be now many ashes just a ministry. Now it will be now maybe ashes praise and worship ministry. Now the eyes will be narrowed from the whole church. 
it comes to the ministers. Again, it will come down whether it's the ushering ministry or the ministry where they are serving or all these things are determined by the complete processes of every stage. Let me explain this further. Again, you are in fact, there is a season where it's, you're just general, you're just a youth. You're seeing every other person. It takes a process. It takes a process of growth. It takes a process of growth. It, if that process is not hacked in between, you will go to the next stage where it will be narrowed. If you're a minister, you will come down to now choose from the minister because as Reverend said, you cannot be a minister. Sometimes it's not very easy. A minister and just get hooked and get into marriage with someone who is not in that level of ministry, because at some point you will not match in this situation. So selection comes as you continue to grow, as you continue to serve. It is a, a, a huge part of faithfulness. Service, faithfulness, and growth. Responsibility. Remembering that marriage is a, it's an institution of responsibility and purpose. So as you continue to serve, there are things that come out of discernment. You are now able to close down and say, surely it's not the other gentleman that was in the choir. I see this other one in the usher. Then at some point, you will just get to a place where there is this voice, this voice inside. And then most of the time, it's confirmed by men. If when you're not sure, maybe you have, it has narrowed to maybe two or three. Now that you can be drawn to maybe a few, but you'll find that a, a friend can even tell you, ah, you can match so and so. Or maybe someone can even joke with you about somebody. Or someone can even tell you, ah, I dreamt of. But the, the Bible says that a match is confirmed by two or three witnesses. There is always a confirmation at the selection point. But there must be a designing voice from God. Amen, amen, amen. That is so powerful. So, uh, <laughs> I have learned a lot so much, you too, uh, and uh, singles, I know you have learned a lot, and uh, uh, <laughs> I wish we, we uh, for us to stop here. Uh, Pastor Byron, maybe just give a parting shot as we mm -hmm. end uh, today. We will continue and we will continue on this uh, topic uh, next to Tuesday because I know we have not finished it yet. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. A parting shot from me? Yes. <laughs> this is what I want to tell the youth and singles. That once you felt a discernment inside, before men confirm before you move out to agree to an engagement so that you can start further plans please look at this gentleman look at this lady and go back and lock yourself in the house and ask yourself these questions if this man did not have a job will i still stay with him if this man did not come from this tribe would i be with him if this man turns to be roguish and start being 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 uh, cruel, will I still be with him? If this man's relatives, parents are just turn after the wedding, will I still be with him? If you are a gentleman, go and ask yourself questions. If peradventure anything happened and my, this lady was involved in an accident. Would I still stay with her? If this lady is unable to have a baby, will I still stay with her? And the lady should ask, if we go to hospital and it's the man who is unable to have, to, 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 if it's, it's not able to, 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 to produce, will I be able to stay with her? These are pertinent questions, the youths and singles. Before you agree, ask yourself these tough questions. Should push come to shove, will I still sustain the union? Because you are not just an individual. You are a mirror of the body of Christ. 
every time we do things in this institution of marriage that gives a picture that is not of the right picture of Christ and his church, we do damage to the faith. So this is what I tell the youth and singles that I counsel, that please do not commit yourself before you know the gravity of what you're getting into. You're not just getting into an institution of men. You're getting into an institution where God will use others through your union. Every marriage that is stable, God uses it to mirror the marriage of Christ and his church in the days that we are looking at in the future. So please look at this man, look at this lady, go and lock yourself in the room and ask yourself questions. Because the moment you tell him that, sir, lady, I agree to be with you. Please, you get into a union of purpose where the grace of God should be able to carry you through. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> Singles, you have had it for yourself. Please, before you say yes to anyone, go and ask yourself the questions that Pastor has said. Uh, uh, ask yourself uh, those questions that if anything happens to this man or this woman, will I still stand beside them? Will I still be with them? Or, you know, that is what happens uh, uh, when now people get married and then uh, they start seeing uh, some other things. Uh, you know, we always say marriage is for uh, two imperfect people. <laughs> yeah. Everybody is growing. Uh, uh, the, yeah. the, 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 woman, the woman you married is not the woman who is uh, today because she has grown. So uh, you find that uh, uh, people, when they, they, they go, you find them saying such a thing. This is not the man I married. This is not the woman I married. It is true. It is not the man you married because he has grown. And it is not the woman you married because she has grown. So uh, <laughs> there are so many things. Uh, the way person is saying, you need to go and ask yourself. Yeah, you need to go and ask yourself, this man is growing, this woman is growing. They are also changing. As they grow, they are changing. And uh, Pastor has talked about if something happens to them, if, if, if that beauty fades away, if they are not able to, uh, to have children, what will you do? as a person. And I think that Pasa will really help the young people to do that. So I just want you to pray for someone out there that uh, they are in this stage of selection and they are confused. Uh, I, I, I really, before you just pray, I will give you like two minutes. You just explain what they are. You know, it is the way you have said, sometimes it is a season. Uh, uh, like us ladies, you feel uh, when you, it is your time, you will have so many proposals. A lot of them is like everywhere you go, somebody is proposing. <laughs> everywhere you go, somebody is proposing. And then at the end, you find that you, you either didn't say yes to any uh, because of uh, the way we have said the barriers and the challenges. Uh, you didn't say yes to any. But uh, it reaches a time now you desire to have those proposals. So what, uh, 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 what advice will you give to the ladies, especially when they have a lot of proposals? Or even the men, uh, maybe they, 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 they are feeling attracted to, to so many people and they feel they need to make a decision, but they just don't know how. Pastor Byron, can you hear me? Oh my goodness. Uh, <laughs> I think Pastor Byron has gone off. Um, uh, uh, please, if you have any question, if you're watching and you have any question about <laughs> this, uh, we will start from there. I don't want to answer that question, but we will start from there. Uh, when you have a lot of proposals and uh, uh, you, you, you feel uh, uh, you are in a, in a state of confusion, or as a man, uh, I can see Pastor is back, uh, or uh, you are a man and you are in a valley of indecision. You don't know uh, who 
to go to and what you are supposed to do. Uh, I think that is very, uh, very, very, very important. Sir, did you hear my question? Uh, just answer us and then you pray for them. Uh, about someone being in the value of indecision? Yeah, being in the value of indecision. Okay, uh, when, when you are in the valley of indecision, it is important to just talk to your partner, share with your partner, talk to him or her, and open your heart and tell them that you just did some short while. Not that you are forgetting about them. You see, sometimes this is why it's important that you dip yourself in the word, dip yourself in service, so that your purpose can sustain you in such times of decision making. Because sometimes you can tell them that, give me a short while, let me just stabilize, there are a few things I need to do. Because if you do not, if you do not pull yourself back a bit and allow the Holy Spirit to lead you to the specific person, most often than not, many people are distracted. In fact, very many people are normally distracted just at the verge of decision making because it is during that time the season is right and you can always tell actually the truth is most people tell but now the decision making because they are not up to study you find most of them just leave their guts they now they just focus on marriage they just focus on partner they just focus on instead of still dripping in service still serving still being obedient, still doing the right things in lead, the leading of the Holy Spirit. So if, it, if anyone is in the valley of indecision, this is what I advise you. Pull back. Pull back. Talk to the lady. Talk to the gentleman. Please, let me get there. There's a few things that I need to sort out. Please allow me. Then get to your pastor or get to someone spiritual. Some, uh, get a partner who is mature. Get a partner who knows you. Get a partner who is mature in faith and share with them and get into prayer. Get into prayer. Let them pray with you. Let them work with you so that you get sober enough so that you can make the right Holy Spirit inspired position. And sometimes these people that you share with, maybe your pastor, maybe your HBC leader, maybe your, and depending on the maturity, God can use the same, same people. Maybe the, the Lord has inspired something in their heart, but it's only that they, you had not shared with them. So as you pray with them, these are the same people that the Lord can use. So just pull back, share with someone of faith, of who is mature, and then walk through that place in prayer for a decision that is worthy and which is eternal. Amen, amen, yes. amen. Just, just pray for us, sir. <laughs> Okay, let us pray. Everlasting Father, we thank you. We bless you. And once again, we honor you. Thank you because you are the God of purpose and you are the God that gifts men. We thank you for this program. We thank you for this vision. We thank you for your servant, the root, that Lord, you seal this vision in the heart, not because of anything, but because of your purpose, that you are preparing the sons and daughters that have been listening to us. And I speak tonight in the name of Jesus. Should there be any lady, should there be any gentleman that is currently in a valley of indecision, I speak by this word tonight that, Lord, you will inspire wisdom. You will inspire revelation. You will inspire sound decision-making tonight in the name of Jesus. Lord, should there be anyone who is watching us and who is listening to your counsel and who is at this moment is on a path of destruction, has been distracted by the wicked schemes of the enemy. Lord, I speak right now in the name of Jesus that that path will be closed by the wisdom of your word. I speak grace. I speak favor upon every youth and every single that is listening to us. And Father, even if there are married couples that are listening to us, some could be experiencing trouble. Some could be experiencing and 
as experiencing and going through a separation or even a divorce, Lord, I pray that by your word of counsel, I pray for a restoration. Should there be anyone who is struggling in the marriage and listening and watching tonight, I speak restoration tonight. In the name of Jesus, Lord, inspire your wisdom in the hearts of the young ladies and gentlemen that are listening and watching. And I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that from tonight, they are going to move by your own inspiration. Your spirit will take over the stewardship of their lives. They will serve in obedience. They will serve in their fellowships. They will serve as their relationships mature towards the end that you had ordained for them in marriage. We bless you, Father, and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Pastor Byron, for coming to the show. We are blessed and it is always an honor to have you. Uh, so <laughs> God bless you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, our viewers, for uh, staying with us up to the end of this show. Uh, we are so excited. Please meet us again next Tuesday, same time, same platform. And if you have not liked our page, if you're watching on Facebook, just please click up there, follow the page, so that you will not you get a notification every time we go live. And also, if you're on YouTube, make sure you click uh, on the bell and you subscribe to our channel. Let us develop this community. Let share with your friend please let us help our singles out there uh, they really need this information there are so many singles making a lot of mistakes because of lack of information and lack of knowledge and that's what the bible say my people perish because of lack of knowledge we have this knowledge and that is why we are sharing it out so share it with a friend and we'll be so much excited. Thank you, Chris Paz. Thank you, Joanna. Thank you, Shiko, uh, for being here with us up to now. We are so excited and uh, we are happy that you are uh, been with us uh, 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 until now. So God bless you so much. And please support Ruth Sifa Ministries. Just go uh, to our YouTube channel uh, uh, for those watch our videos. Just like and be our partner in this ministry. So God bless you. And let's meet next time. That is next Tuesday. Come. Uh, by the way, Pastor Byron, he has his own book. Uh, if you want to order, just inbox me uh, the book called Marriage Nuggets, a very powerful book that you don't want to miss it. So check it out. Thank you. God bless you and have a blessed night. Thank you.